There are two movies that have come out in the last couple of months. One came out in September of 2014 called The Remaining. And one came out in October 2014 called Left Behind. The one called Left Behind is based on a series of books by a couple of men named LaHaye and Jenkins that have been around for a couple of decades, have been very, very popular. Uh, this one is stars Nicholas Cage. It's a better known movie, but uh, didn't get a lot of good attention and didn't do too well at the box office, at least in the month and a half or so that it's been active. But both of these movies and the series of books that came out a couple of decades ago called Left Behind deal with something called the rapture. And in Churches of Christ, we don't talk a lot about the rapture because we don't come across that word in the New Testament. Uh, you read your Bible, the Old Testament or New Testament, and you will not see the word rapture. But I can tell you that you've got a good opportunity to talk to other people about these ideas. Because most people who claim to be Christian in our society, especially people who are evangelical, people who are uh, a part of a group that believes in teaching other people the gospel and bringing other people to the gospel, and Protestants, or not Catholics, are more and more likely to believe in this idea of the rapture. And that's what these movies and that's what these books are based upon. And so this morning, I want us to take just a few minutes and talk about these ideas. I want us to understand at least a little bit about what they're talking about and what they mean. And then I want us to understand with some detail what the Bible has to say about these events. First of all, hopefully you understand at least partially what the rapture is. But there are two basic passages, technically three, but one of which is a parallel to the passage that Jack just wrote. Here in Matthew chapter 24, especially in verse 40 and 41, you see Jesus say, Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Luke 17 verse 34 and 35 is a parallel passage, and it adds that two people will be in one bed, one will be taken, and one will be left. And so the idea of the rapture is that right before the end of time, or really a thousand and a few years before the end of time, all of the Christians, all of the people who follow Jesus, will mysteriously disappear from the earth. And all the people who haven't followed Jesus will stay on the earth and deal with the aftermath and the things that are coming that God wants to spare the Christians. Now there's different, there's different ways of approaching it. Some people and most people say that there's been seven years of tribulation and then Jesus comes back to establish his thousand year reign. I can tell you that the only place in the entire New Testament that talks about a thousand year reign is in Revelation chapter 20. And I want you to know that when I read that passage, I'm not sure what it means. I think it may refer to a time before Jesus came to earth. I think it may refer to a time right now. Or it may refer to a time in the future. I really don't know. But I can tell you what I do know. It does not teach that Jesus will return to earth and reign on earth as a human king for a thousand years. But that's what most people believe. And I can tell you that 61%, they took a survey, 61% evangelical leaders believe in these ideas. Most people who go to church in Hamilton County go to a kind of church that teaches these ideas. These are very, very prevalent. And so the idea is Jesus takes all the Christians out in their seven years of tribulation. Jesus comes back and establishes a thousand year reign and then takes everybody to heaven at the end of that thousand years. That's and the rapture is when people disappear before the seven-year tribulation. Some people say they will disappear in the middle. Some people say they disappear at the end of 
in Christ will rise first. Before anybody rises to meet the Lord in the clouds in the air, the dead come out of the grave. The dead come out of the grave first. Now, it all happens almost at the same time, the way it's pictured in the Scripture. It's practically simultaneous. But it's a little bit first, at the very least. The resurrection. People coming out of the grave. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Right after Jesus ascends into heaven, the apostles are standing there and they're looking up. They're, I don't know, where did he go? Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Angels appear. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go to heaven. You'll see him coming. Revelation 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see it, even those who pierced it, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over it. You see, everybody will see it. Not mysterious, not hard to understand. And all of the dead, the righteous and the unrighteous, will come out of the grave. All of the dead will be resurrected. John chapter 5, Jesus prophesies about this, and he tells us, What's going to happen? John 5, verse 28, Jesus said, Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come forth, those who did the good deeds to a resurrection of life, and those who committed the evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. And notice what Jesus said. An hour is coming. There will come a time when all the dead will come out of the grave and everybody will receive judgment. Those who are good with God will be resurrected to life and reward. Those who are not good with God will be resurrected to judgment and punishment. But they're all going to be resurrected. So Jesus coming, taking a few back before he calls any of the dead forth, contradicts the Bible. It's just not what the Bible says. And anything that we believe has got to be in agreement with what the Bible says. And that idea simply doesn't meet that. 1 Corinthians 15, I tell you a mystery, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. And we just talked about in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. 1 Thessalonians 4 says, then we who are alive and remain. So he tells us when the dead are resurrected, there are these still people that are alive. There will be people on earth who are still alive when the dead come out of the tombs. We who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the air. First, First Corinthians 15 says, we will be changed. Talking about those who are still alive. Those who have not yet died, not yet been buried, not yet in the tomb, or wherever their body may have been deposited. We who are still alive will be changed. Will be given a spiritual body. And First Corinthians 15 talks a lot about the resurrection and about our body, a, an imperishable body, an immortal body. A body that's planted will be resurrected, something different. And then we who are alive will be changed when this happens. There are not people left here still living the same life in the same body. It all changes when Jesus comes back. That's what he's saying. And the earth will be destroyed. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, talks about the end of time. Talks about what happens when Jesus comes back. 2 Peter 3, verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Notice you hear that over and over. Jesus said it will come like a thief. Paul said it will come like a thief. Now Peter says it will come like a thief. Unexpected. In which the heavens will pass away with a roar. You hear that sound again? A roar, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Well, with a roar, he says. And the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. And the earth and its works will be burned up. That's the picture that the Bible paints of Jesus' return. Not a sudden disappearance of people and everybody else left to, to live through the worst time in the history of existence. But Jesus coming back unexpectedly and suddenly and the destruction of the physical elements of the earth being destroyed forthwith soon. Uh, and everybody will be judged at the same time. The Bible teaches this very clearly. 
Acts 17, verse 31 says, He has fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom He has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. I want you to notice this. He has fixed a day. Now, Matthew 24 says, Of that day and hour no one knows, not even the Son, only the Father in heaven. When will this day come? Not even Jesus knew when he was on earth. Does he know a day? I don't know. But he didn't when he was here with his apostles. But Acts tells us, even though we don't know when that day is, that day has been set. The judgment day has been scheduled. It's on God's calendar. It's circled in red all through the Bible. And it says you need to be ready because God has already decided what day that will be. But here's the point for today. It's a day. It's one day. It's one day. And you see this in some of the passages that we've already read. 2 Peter 3.10 which says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. John 5.28 Jesus called it an hour. An hour is coming when the dead will hear His voice and will come forth from the tomb. An hour, a day. Uh, 1 Thessalonians you go back, let's go back to 1 Thessalonians uh, 4. The Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, verse 16, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, that we who are alive remain to be caught up together with them. Come down to chapter 5. Uh, verse 2, which is only three verses later. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, the destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman and a child, and they will not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. Now this is the same thing that Jesus was saying at the end of the passage that Jack read a few minutes ago. He says, therefore be on the alert. Be ready. Always be ready because it's going to come suddenly. It's going to come unexpectedly and it's one day. And after that day comes, there's not another seven years. There's not another thousand and seven years to get ready. It's done. It's one day. It's one day. Now come forward to chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. So here we're talking about the same thing. Jesus is revealed from heaven and he brings judgment. He brings punishment. Verse 9. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When? Verse 10. When he comes to be glorified in his saints all that day. And to be marveled at among all who have believed, for our testimony to you was believed. And with all these passages, you see all these passages, and it is a lot of information contained in Scripture. It doesn't give us every detail. And I can't tell you every detail of how judgment will work. I can't tell you the exact minute-by-minute -minute sequence of events that will occur because the Bible doesn't give us every detail, but it gives us a lot of details. And those details are these. When Jesus returns to earth, it will be sudden, it will be unexpected, it will be loud, it will be visible, there will be a resurrection of all of the dead, and everybody will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Brother John, and before the, the Lord's Supper this morning, talked about Matthew 25, which is, uh, yeah, which is where everybody is gathered together in one place, divides the sheep from the goat, the goat, the goat, goats from the sheep, goats on his left, the sheep on his right. 
you know which way you're looking at. That's the day. And so anything that says judgment's going to happen a little bit at a time, and some people are going to get their reward, and then some people are going to get some punishment on earth, and then some people are going to get some more reward and come back and have some reward on earth for a thousand years, and then the dead are going to be called forth, and there's going to be a resurrection, there's going to be a final judgment, simply contradicts what the Bible says. So you go back to Matthew 24, and it says one will be taken and one will be left. There will be two women grinding grain. One will be taken and one will be left. Two people sleeping in a bed. One will be taken one will be left. Two men working in a field. One will be taken and one will be left. What's it talking about? Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? People who are alive on earth, some will be saved, some will be lost. Some will be taken to heaven. Some will be left to punishment. He's not saying they'll be left on earth to keep living their lives in the absence of the people who've been taken. He's saying some will be left for punishment. Some will face the judgment seat of Christ and they'll be put on Christ's left hand and he'll say to them, depart from me, I never knew you who practice lawlessness. But it's the same day. It's the exact same time. So let me encourage you. Talk to your friends about this. Talk to your friends about what the Bible says. Don't try to get into arguments. Don't try to say anything that, that makes somebody feel stupid. Don't try to say anything that makes a person feel like they're not very smart. But try to say... You know, the Bible teaches that uh, when Jesus comes back, everybody will see Jesus. And all you've got to do is go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Just remember that one passage. And really, you can go three chapters in a row. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 Thessalonians 1. Those chapters are all three right in a row. But if you get to 1 Thessalonians 4, you can find them all. And you can say, it's going to be loud. It's going to be visible. It's going to be sudden and unexpected. Everybody's going to hear it. Everybody's going to see it. Punishment starts then. And try to plant the seed of the Bible can be understood. And there's no reason for this dispute. There's no reason for this disagreement. There's no reason for people to be all over the map on because a lot of what people teach about this is just conjecture. It's just, well, I take this one passage and it seems like it might be that, so I'm just going to teach that it's true. And they ignore all these other passages. It's just not helpful. It's like taking a recipe and it says, well, you put bacon soda in here, so I put bacon soda in there, therefore I have a pie. No. you got to read the whole thing. you got to do the whole thing. And it's the same way with most disagreements about what the Bible teaches. There is a day of judgment coming. If you're not ready for that day, if you're not ready to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, then you need to get ready. God is patiently waiting for you to repent. He's patiently waiting for you to entrust your soul to Jesus, for you to take advantage of the immeasurable blessings that He provides in you. If you haven't come to Christ, if you haven't entrusted your life to Him, do it today. Put your faith in Jesus. Confess your faith. Repent of your sins. Be immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins. United with Him in the likeness of His death. If you need to come to Christ, if you need to return to Christ, please come down front. Please stand the same.